Hi guys and welcome to episode 4 of Island Whispers. We've had a fantastic afternoon here at Mystery Island and today we've got your questions that have been submitted for the one and only NXT's Lever Bates. So Lever, shall we just get cracking with the questions? Okay. First question's been submitted by Peter MacArthur. He'd like to know, during your time in NXT, what benefits did you gain that you probably wouldn't have working on the Indies? Um. We well, had the obvious, uh, the kind of getting your name out there on a broader scale. Uh, just working with WWE and NXTs alone uh, kind of doubled <laughs> my my fans out there. So that that was a very huge benefit. Um, another benefit was getting to work with all the talent and, and the the trainers there who I watched growing up, you know, so it's really cool to get to work with them, like, I got to work with Dusty Rhodes, I got to work and, and talk with, like, William Regal and, and Albert and Norman Smiley, so that, that was a huge benefit, because they have so much knowledge just to pass down, so even even just being there for the, the, the TV tapings was just such an honor, um, as well as I have a degree, a double major degree uh, in theater and radio TV production, uh, so getting to see how everything's ran was really, really kind of cool because it's such a huge scale. WWE is not only just a wrestling show, it's a TV and corporation, you know? So it was really cool to see how everything works and how they do it all. It's such a huge scale. And I would just sit there and watch the, the crew work. Like how do they set up their riggings and the lighting and, and how you know the commentary is ran from the back to, to the actual commentators you see on TV. There's so many small things you don't realize are going on back there. So it's really cool to see something on such a grand scale in person. Oh, fantastic. Um, our next question that's been sent in is from David Anderson. And he'd like to know, how did you get into doing stunt work? Uh, stunt work, actually, I uh, always did sports growing up. I really wanted to do martial arts growing up, but having a single mom and, you know, she couldn't really afford it. So once I got to college, I started doing uh, kickboxing and taekwondo and then doing a degree in acting under theater. I found that I was way more inclined for the physical aspects of performing. So I, I always like clung to that, like with dance and just, just like the slow movements in your body when you're acting as opposed to, you know, just doing everything with your voice or facials. So I kind of went with that and one of my first jobs outside of the university once I graduated was doing stunt work at a dude ranch. Uh, <laughs> random, I know, but yeah, we were doing western stunt shows, so it was really, really cool. So that's kind of how it happened, it was a slippery slope and they just kept doing it ever since. Great. Um, our next question, your feud with Jimmy Havoc seemed like great fun for you and you seem to be a big fan of him and his style. Please tell us a bit more about that. Also, <laughs> also, do you have a message for Jimmy for when he comes to the Mystery Island? Um, Jimmy is fun. Uh, everyone's really nice here. You'll, you'll get to sign a lot, so make sure you don't have carpal tunnel. Um, <laughs> no, uh, be nice. He's kind of a bad guy, so be nice here. Um, You're scaring me now. <laughs> no, yeah, no, Jimmy, Jimmy's a really cool guy, so. Uh, but yeah, he can be scary. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think, I think Mr. Island, I think, I think you guys are ready for Mr. Havoc. Oh, brilliant. Um, next question, are you very, uh, you are very much into cosplay, but where did the love begin? And who, who were you into at the time that really got you? Um... It wasn't really one person that got me into it. It was because cosplay wasn't a thing when I was doing it. Uh, it wasn't like the word cosplay was even really around at the time. I've just been always a big, big geek. I've always done uh, like role playing. Like when you're a kid, all right, let's play Batman and Catwoman. I was obsessed with Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. I tried to make her costume, but I tried to do it like she did in the movies. That doesn't actually work. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just always found reasons to dress up. I don't know. I always loved it. I always like being ridiculous and, and make, playing make believe, and I kind of just crossed over. And once I got to college, did theater, but it still wasn't enough. So I'd find reasons to dress up, and then doing like bowling leagues. I made everyone in my team do different theme nights. So we'd be at, like pajama themes and like 
Catherine Scroll Girl costumes and like dress up like men. So it just I would find reasons to to dress up even before it was a thing at yeah, cons. Um, and then just kind of realized like one day just other people were doing it and uh, I kind of made it a thing. So yeah, I've, I've always been like that. So and then oh, I decided great. to bring it to wrestling. No one else had it. So. Yeah, totally like original, isn't it? Um, next question. If you could have one WrestleMania match, who would you like to face? The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? The obvious um, choice. <laughs> um, I don't know, WrestleMania. Actually, uh, but I would want to go back in time. Uh, by the time I make it there. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess my, some of my favorite ones were always like... Were like the Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels matches. I love those. Those were just so great at the art of storytelling. Um, so either one of those guys. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just long to be long try WrestleMania. <laughs> no matter. Give me anybody. I just want to be there. <laughs> oh fuck. Um. Next question. Have you noticed? Have you noticed any differences between wrestling in front of UK fans compared to fans in America? Um. Uh, actually. I don't know. Like, not not really anything too like obvious. You know what I mean? Besides the way you guys talk. Um. <laughs> Um, I, I think sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes UK fans are a little shyer, uh, at least at li live shows, uh, but nothing really like, oh, uh, yeah, this is glaringly different, they're, they're just, guys are all just awesome, you're just, I'm just happy you guys come and hang out and cheer me on, um, um yeah. Honestly, every every show has been slightly different. Depending on the show, is the crowd's a little different. Some there was one show last weekend that they chanted the entire time, just chanted. They chanted for a dance off when there was no like <laughs> neighbor dance off. Always come and dancing, and then chanted for a dance off. They kept chanting the entire time. But then the next day, the crowd was just really quiet. You know, and not that they weren't enjoying it. They were totally enjoying it. But they were just really like watching it. So. But that's how it is in America. Some days you'll get like the most rowdiest, craziest crowds, and then the next day it's like they're just really focused. So I think that's just people in general. I don't really think it's a UK thing, except for they call cookies biscuits here. Promise. Um, every time we interview someone here, we we ask what we call the mystery island question. Okay. And basically, what it is is we ask you what talents that have you got that people may not be aware of. Do you have any special talents, or um, can you do anything special? <laughs> yeah, I uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I was in marching band in high school and college and grade school. Well, not grade school, but I was in band in grade school. Uh, I can play the alto sax. I can play the barry sax, tenor sax. I'm a saxophone girl. The only one I haven't played yet is the soprano. Uh, so. I have a little bit of musical talent. I can't sing to save my life, uh, but I can I can play some saxophone. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, I think that's good for mis for mystery talent. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, which is your favorite cosplay you've done, and what costume would you like to do now? What 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 haven't you done that you'd really enjoy to do? Um, my favorite might be. Maybe my Captain Jack Sparrow, I think. Oh, that, that was the one that I didn't expect to be any good at all. Because I looked at it on the couch, on the bed as I had it all laid out. Because pirate costumes are like pieced together from a lot of different things. So you're piecing them together. And it's just, it looks like crap when you're not wearing it. And you're like, oh man, this is going to suck. So I put it on and I got the facial hair. And I started trimming and doing everything you need to do for the facial hair. And then when I had the facial hair on and I had the costume on, this was Thursday before the show on Friday. I was like, oh, I look just like him. I'm so that was really exciting. And then I get to add like the characterizations to it. Uh, that made it even more fun. Uh, I said that's probably one of my favorites. It's hard to choose though, because uh, they're all my children. 
<laughs> uh, one I haven't done yet that I like to do. Maybe Wasp. Uh, not like, I mean, some people know her, some people don't. It's a character uh, in Marvel Adventures, more of the comic books than I think they've had her show up in any of the movies yet. But I just really like that suit a lot. And I think it'd be kind of cool to come out with the wings. Uh, so I like to do that at some point. Um, one day, I want to get enough funding to get myself a huge giant robot, very Gundam or or Pacific Rim type, you know, Jaeger type thing. So one of these days. That would be amazing. I'd love to see you. <laughs> I want to I want to Can you do an impression? Giant can, robot can you guy. speak That's like him? Can you speak like Jack Sparrow? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, did you notice a big change in the amount of people who recognised you in public after your first NXT appearance? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm getting a lot more blue pants now as opposed to just, hey, Leva? Are you Leva Bay? So, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I could say uh, a little bit more. It depends honestly what color I'm wearing. Like, I was wearing this shirt one day at Universal and uh, I didn't even think about it because, you know, I was I was working, but I was like kind of watching someone work. I was in that, you can wear regular clothes that way, kind of blend in. Um, and uh, someone came up to me and was like, are you blue pants? And I'm like, how did he know? And I realized, oh yeah, I'm wearing the shirt, it's the accent colors. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, especially if I'm wearing any sort of blue pants looking colors, I definitely get recognized a lot. But sometimes I don't. Depends, like, if I have the hat on, the hoodie on, you know, or whatever, uh, you know, different color. Sometimes, sometimes, do it, it, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, can you describe your feelings for the first time when you appeared on uh, WWE NXT TV? Um, it was true from true. I mean, we all grow up watching WWE, you know. I. Uh, we all do, you know. <laughs> so to actually have that accomplished, that's like something you check off your bucket list. You're like, and it's done. So it's a really cool, accomplished feeling, honestly. And exciting, you get adrenaline rush. So yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, last question, Lee, that, uh, what company, uh, sorry, which company did you like working for the most, TN TNA or NXT? On both. Uh, they're both very different and they they bring different things to the table. So I again like I don't like like choosing costumes. I don't like choosing costumes. Um, I'm grateful for everything both companies have given me, to be honest. I mean without one I don't know if I would have the other, to be honest. Um, and I think I mean, both companies provide opportunities for a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to choose because I, I don't like to do that. Uh, I like working with both. Everyone there, like I've not run into anyone at NXT, WWE, or TNA that like, oh, I don't want to work with that person ever again. Like that's never happened. Uh, I. You know, it's just all about the attitude. You gotta come in, you know, being happy that you're there and do the work and enjoy what you do and be proud of what you do. And, you know, like, things go well. So, I don't know, that's my advice to anyone. Like, just enjoy and be proud and have fun. Oh, thank you so much for coming, oh, Lee. It's been really nice having you here. Um, thank you guys for watching and please subscribe. Bye.